Let's take a look at mixed fraction equations up to 500. At a sleepover, Christopher eats 2 20ths of a pizza and his friend Samantha eats 3 20ths of a pizza. What fraction of pizza did Christopher and Samantha eat together? Okay, well if I want to know the total amount that they both ate, I would need to add those two fractions together. So I'm going to say 20 out of or I'm sorry, 2 out of 20 plus 3 out of 20, and I'm going to add that up. Now, before we keep going, let's take a second and look, because remember, when you're adding or subtracting with fractions, you always need to have a common denominator. Okay, so that common denominator, common means the same, and denominator means the number on the bottom of the fraction. So you need to make sure that the numbers on the bottom are the same. In this case, they're already both 20. So I'm just going to say, okay, I'm going to make sure my answer is also out of 20. If they weren't, I would have to do an extra step to make the denominators the same first. The reason that that's really important, because remember the bottom number or the denominator of a fraction tells you what it's out of. So if we're comparing pizzas, 20 would mean that there's 20 slices in each pizza. So if we slice them differently, let's say we sliced one pizza into four slices and we slice the other one into 20, those slices wouldn't be the same size. So when we make sure the denominators are the same, we're making sure that we're adding up the same slices of pizza. Okay, so now that we have that down and our denominators are common or the same, we can just add straight across the numerator meaning the top of our fraction. So on the top, sorry, my pen wasn't working there for a minute. On the top, two plus three gives us five. Okay, so all together they ate five twentieths of a pizza. Now in this case, we can simplify our answer because five goes into both five and 20. Right, so we could write five as five times one, and we could write 20 as five times four. And if you do it that way, then you can see that you could cancel the common factor of five, and saying they ate 5 twentieths of a pizza is the exact same thing as saying they ate one fourth or one quarter of a pizza. At harvest time, Madeline picks a basket of apples from the tree in her backyard. After throwing out the bad apples, there's 5 sixteenths of a basket of good apples she can use to make pies. After baking pies with the apples, there is 1 16th a basket of apples remaining. What fraction of the basket of apples did Madeline use to make pies? All right, so since I want to know how much she used up I'm going to need to subtract, right? She started out with 5 sixteenths, a basket of good apples. And if she was left with 1 16th, well, if I subtract what she was left with, that should tell me how much she used. Now, just like addition, when you're subtracting, you need a common denominator. But I can see that these already have that, right? The denominator is 16 in both. So I'm just going to leave that in my answer. My answer is going to also be out of 16. And then I can subtract across the numerator, right? 5 minus 1 on the top gives me 4. All right, now this is my answer, but I think I can simplify that a little bit because I'm noticing that 4 goes into both 4 and 16. So I could write 4 as 4 times 1, and I could write 16 as 4 times 4. And that just shows me that I could cancel out a factor of 4 on the top and the bottom, and 4 sixteenths has the same value as 1 fourth. Okay, so she used 1 fourth a basket of apples. A football team has eight twelfth yards to move the ball before the end zone. On their next play, they move the ball forward and need one fourteenth yards before the end zone. 
How far did the team move the ball on the last play? Okay, well, if we take the total amount they needed before the end zone, which was 8 twelfths, and we subtract what they need after the next play, right, which is 1 14th, the difference between that should tell us how much they moved the ball on that one play. Now this time, notice I do not have a common denominator. The denominator or the bottom of one fraction is 12, and the denominator or the bottom of the other is 14. So before I can add or subtract, in this case subtract, I would need to find a common denominator. Okay, and the easiest way to find your common denominator is to think about the least common multiple. Okay, well to find the multiples of each number, think about counting by that number, right? So for example, if I'm counting by 12, I would say 12, 24, 36, 48, 60, 72, and I'm going to say dot, dot, dot. Okay, now let's think about counting by 14s. Okay, 14, 28, 42 would be next. Okay, 14 more than 42, that would be 56. 14 more than that would be 70. And 14 more than that would be 84. Okay, so I think I'm getting close. I think I should have kept going on my first list, right? Counting by 12s, 12, 24, 36, 48, 60, 72. 12 more than that would be 84. So notice the least common multiple or the smallest number that is common, the same, in both of those lists of multiples is 84. Okay, so that means I want to rewrite these two fractions as being out of 84. Okay, well how many times does 12 go into 84? And we can kind of see from our list, this was 12 times 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So if 12 times 7 gave us 84, that means that 12 goes into 84 seven times. So if I multiplied the bottom number, right, 12 times 7 to get 84, whatever I change the bottom by, I have to change the top or the numerator by the same amount. So if I multiplied by 7 on the bottom, I also need to multiply by 7 on the top to keep the fraction equivalent or equal. Okay, well 7 times 8, that's going to be 56. So that tells me that 56 out of 84 has the same value as 8 out of 12. And then I want to do that same process with my second fraction. Okay, well how many times did 14 go into 84? Well, I can use my list again to help me, right? Because this was 14 times 1 times 2 times 3 times 4 times 5 times 6. So 14 went into 84 six times. So that means if I multiplied 14 times 6 to get to 84, I have to do the same thing on the top and say 1 times 6, which is going to give me 6. All right, and now I did all that hard work to get the same common denominator, and now I'm ready to subtract. So remember, when you add or subtract, you want to keep that same common denominator on the bottom, right? Denominator means the bottom of your fraction. And then we subtract across the numerator or top. So on the top, I'm saying 56 minus 6 gives me 50. Okay, and I think I'm going to be able to simplify this answer a little bit, 50 out of 84, because I'm noticing they're both even numbers. And if they're both even numbers, that means that 2 goes into both of them. So I'm going to try, and I'm just going to write this up top. I'm running out of a little room here. 
So if 2 goes into both of these, well, 2 times 25 would give me 50. Okay, and then what's half of 84? Well, that would be 42. So 2 times 42 would give me 84. So if I cancel out my common factor of 2, I'm left with 25 over 42. All right, so finally, now we know that the team must have moved the ball 25, 40 seconds of a yard on the last play.